Now, usually when we talk about smartphones mm. and water, the question is whether the device is waterproof. But there's a bigger issue, researchers say, needs consideration when we check our emails or surf the net. Just how much water does the World Wide Web use? Well, experts have estimated the download of a single gigabyte could use up to 200 litres of water. Dr Kave Madani from the Imperial College London has investigated this topic. He joined me a little earlier from London. So at this point, we're not quite sure about the exact number, but we're estimating between one litre to 200 litres of water being to be involved in downloading one gigabyte of um, data. And, you know, to give you a rough idea, at the, at the uh, higher end, this is equivalent to the water needed for producing one kilogram of tomatoes, which is quite huge. And when we're talking about amounts as much as 200 litres of water. Why is that? Why is so much water required in some instances? Uh, there are two major reasons. One is um, the requirement for cooling uh, of the data centres. Um, the data centres are constantly working whenever we down download something, message each other, check emails, do a s simple search. All of these are, are using a lot of energy. So one one is uh, the need for um, getting rid of the heat um, produced in, in data as a result of our activities. And the other is the energy that is burned over there. So two reasons. One is cooling the, the data centers and the other is the energy they're using. So indirect use of water in, in the production of energy and whatever this, you know, no matter what the source, no matter what source they're using, there's a lot of water being um, used that way. And when we consider the exponential growth in the use of technology of this nature, uh, that's going to mean a lot of water involved, isn't it? And we're seeing more and more of that. Yeah, it is scary because modern people need more uh, from the internet and, and we're increasing our, our reliance on, on the internet. That means increased um, use of water, increased demand for water, but but uh, also we are we are hearing um, the increased uh, you know, need for water in, in other sectors. We need more food, we need more water for drinking, we need more water for the environment. You in Australia appreciate the value of water. You have seen droughts in the past and a lot of climatic variability, so you definitely know how valuable water is. Indeed we do. Uh, we're actually currently experiencing some floods, so a little too much water at this point. But in terms of uh, this as an issue, are we already seeing strategies uh, being employed to try and minimise the amount of water involved, either in the cooling side of the equation or also in terms of more sustainable energy use? Um, we definitely, the, the whole industry has overlooked um, the the impacts they, they're having on, on water. So I, I think the industry was not prepared for this. So the shift that we are seeing in, be, in behavior is mostly because of uh, the lack of water. I mean, Cal lots of these industries are located in California, which which is experiencing a serious drought at the moment. So the lack of water is, is, is forcing the industry to behave differently, uh, but also so the, the good thing is that um, the users of internet are um, the more more careful about the environment. So there is some reputational risk there if these um, companies, that the ICT giants, don't respond to um, what what's happening at the moment. They they can damage their reputation. So people can switch from one server to another or one one internet provider to another because they're not happy with the environmental impacts uh, of these is, these giants. Lots of good, you know, some lots of companies are now reacting. Facebook, Google, Microsoft, um, uh, Apple are doing really good, um, better than before. This is not enough. Um, they're changing the location of their data centers. They're taking them to some some colder places on, on, on the earth. They're changing the the. Um, energy types that they're using, a lot of solar plant and, and renewable energies. This is not enough, but it's definitely helpful. We're doing better than before, but, but a lot needs to be done. I understand, uh, for instance, that Microsoft is looking at developing underwater data centres. Uh, is, is that something that is likely to be a possibility? 
um, you know, tech improvements are, are fascinating. So it is it is hard to say what is what is not possible these days. Uh, they're trying it, and and the good thing about that is is that they can place these data centers closer to areas with 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 uh, more population. Because one of the problems we're having is 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 uh, you know, moving these data centers far away from from uh, places where we have huge populations. So there is some value in in may, putting them closer to major population centers. That's that uh, uh, that's something good about this type of technology. The other thing is, if it's underwater in terms of cooling, uh, they need uh, less energy, and and that is good. Um, that is one of the fascinating uh, ideas that is currently being tested. Um, there are other methods like using even the heat produced by data centers for warming and, and, and heating some, some of the residential or commercial places. So lots of things are happening. It's really hard to tell what, what technology or technique is promising and which one will be used in the near future, but everyone is moving. They're all testing different things. Now, you did mention there that uh, consumers tend to be quite smart about making their choices. Just how can someone establish um, what are the environmental systems sustainability credentials, if you like, of um, a service that they're using or a particular type of technology that they're using? Unfortunately, this industry has not been responsible enough in, in reporting uh, what they have been doing and, and envi their environmental impacts, but we can see another shift in the industry. Some of these, um, some of these companies are now, like Facebook, for example, are now reporting uh, what they are doing for some locations, some of the data centers. As they're becoming more um, environmental friendly, they're b becoming more open about what they are doing. I think consumers can and can put pressure on these companies and ask for um, uh, open access information and and reporting and audit and these kinds of kinds of things unfortunately I think this industry has not been um, um, clear about what they have been doing but this is also changing Dr Kami Madani with the Imperial College in London